Hi there, everybody. Uh, with the halibut season coming here in the next couple of days uh, in the Puget Sound, uh, you know, it's going to be one of the earliest openers we've seen in a while. So here in the year 2022, April 7th is the opener, which is going to happen this Thursday uh, in the Puget Sound. Uh, areas 6 and 7 are going to be opening up Thursday, Friday, and Saturday for halibut fishing. Uh, one fish a day, four fish a year, as per regular rules. Um, before we get into it, I just wanted to go over a few of the rigs we're going to be using in one of our upcoming videos and to give a little bit of a tutorial uh, for how I rig my setups up for halibut. We have a assortment of different rigs that we are going to be using while halibut fishing. Uh, Halibut fishing takes place in anywhere from 40 feet of water all the way up to 200 feet and is done so either drifting, anchoring, or a method that has been becoming popular um, and has been used also in the past quite a bit, trolling for halibut. Uh, these setups that we're going to be showing today are primarily for the use of drifting and anchoring but I'm sure you can use some of the similar components to throw behind a downrigger while slow trolling for halibut. Uh, one of the first rigs that I want to show you, super basic, pretty much what most staple halibut fishermen use is the double hook rig with a white or a glow hoochie. Uh, this hoochie is made by Delta Tackle and on the bottom below the hoochie I have two Gamakatsu Big River Bait Hooks. I found that trailing off the back hook, it is very nice to have a 10 knot hook and the top hook have be a 12 knot, especially when using either a purple or a black label herring, that can be very beneficial towards having a big hook set on the herring. So as I was explaining, this hoochie setup, you can see the leader is only about two feet long and there's two rigs hook rigs hanging off the back the 12 out on top and the 10 out on the bottom and as you can see that currently the top hook is able to slide all the way through that top hook is contained by a crimp that you will be able to adjust and then crimp down that way the top hook becomes stationary now for the line that I'm using for these rigs, I am currently using the Trilene Big Game line. Um, this line comes in several different sizes. The one I prefer is 200 pound Trilene Big Game. It goes all the way up to 300. I know some of the local shops like Holiday Sports sell a line like this and you can buy it in bulk. They usually come in about 110 yard spools and they're really great and affordable price. So, as you can tell, I'll be showing some close-ups here in a little bit, but all of these hooks are actually used with crimps. This is very easy to do as the 200 pound line is not very knot friendly. It is doable as we're gonna show here next. However, the crimps make the whole process faster. Also in the future, if you ever need to swap out and change any gear, it can be done so a lot faster because the crimps are just cut off and new ones are put on. As you can see here, this is one of the rigs that I am talking about. And we have that 200 pound line crimped on with a large swivel. As you can see, the crimp is right there. We use a large crimp. I crimp the crimp three times to ensure a good solid bond. One of the cool little things that is available now on the market are these little glow uh lights they fit onto your line so they're not coming off and they're water activated as you can tell they slide up inside your hoochie as you can see and that provides a little bit of a blinking light in some scenarios that can be really beneficial but it's just another little technique to have on the boat as you can see here i was able to snell 200 pound line around a hook and that worked out just fine in comparison to here we have the crimped on two hooks and with the crimp sliding in the center,
providing adjustability in accordance to your bait that you're going to be using. Here we have a very similar rig to the one that we previously just looked at. So as you can see, we have a large swivel on top that's crimped on, but in this case, we have two hooks that have been snelled on with the 200 pound line. As you can see, it's very doable to snell on the hooks. Again, this has its downsides in the sense that this top hook is now fixed and no longer adjustable. With the previous crimp setup, that hook becomes adjustable. Now, moving forward on from the terminal tackle in terms of the hooks and the line and the swivels that you're using. Now, before I move on to the hoochies for swivels, the bigger the better, as I would say. And usually having a corkscrew swivel to fit onto your main line to be able to detach and attach all this gear is preferred as those screw, corkscrew swivels are almost impossible to bend down. So, as you can see in front of me, I have a whole assortment of different styles of hoochies. There is so much out there, but do remember, don't give the halibut too much credit because really those fish are such aggressive feeders that as long as they have a bait in front of them, they're gonna take it. This one right here, this hoochie has a twin skirt. So it has a, a glow skirt underneath and then a pink skirt on top. What's really nice about these is they're a little bit more heavy duty and those layers of skirts do a very good job of holding scent. Uh, you can inject scent in between the two skirts. For example, uh, any of the Procure products with a, of the gel variety hold on there very well. This right here is what we have already looked at in terms of the regular squid from Delta Tackle. However, this one I have rigged up with a 15 op, yes, 15 op mustad circle hook. Now, circle hooks in the Puget Sound, I would not recommend for everyone. However, some fishermen do swear by it. It is a completely different style of fishing in which you are not setting the hook on the fish. And in the Puget Sound, as most halibut fishermen know, we do get maybe two to three bites every fishing trip. Uh, in Alaska, these are way more popular as in you're dealing with much more fish, but do keep in mind that with these hooks, you let that fish completely swallow your bait and swim off with it. That is the best technique. And if you set the hook with this style of hook, you are more likely to lose the fish. Now here's another example of a little trick or technique that I've been seen used during halibut fishing. As you can see, my hoochie is put on backwards. So my hook is down here and my hoochie is flared out to, towards the top. This creates a little bit of an umbrella effect in which that hoochie spreads out in the current, creating a lot more commotion in the water, causing those halibut to be a little bit more curious and wanting to come in and explore what your bait is. This next bait right here is a fat squid, squid. And what I really like about these, they're really hard and tough. Now, this is the one I really wanna to get to. I'm sure you guys have seen these already in the shops, but I do wanna tell people a little bit more about them because there's a little bit more to the technicalities of why we use this thing right here, which we call a cheater or a large spin and glow. So you can see just as previously, I have a hoochie sitting on top of my two hook rig and I have this large spin and glow on top, something you would see in a lot of river fishing setups. What the spin and glow offers not only is motion as it spins in the current, but it also offers buoyancy to help raise the hoochie off the bottom. A common misconception about halibut is that they're entirely bottom feeders. Halibut actually swim quite a far ways off the bottom to retrieve their prey. So having that hoochie with the combination of the cheater can bring your bait off the bottom, especially when you're jigging, slow down your presentation and provide another aspect for the halibut to bite. A lot of guys fishing in the Puget Sound are convinced that uh, halibut fishing in here is exactly the same as it is in the deep open water that we see off the coast of Washington. That is not always the case. Since we're fishing in about 80 feet of water in comparison to about 300 as we see off the coast or more, 
Colors can impact your day, especially if the halibut are feeling finicky. So don't be afraid, you know, to try out different combinations of cheaters, different colors of hoochies in, a, in combination with different types of baits. As we get finished up here in terms of what's going to go on the receiving end, one of the last things we're going to go over is what kind of bait we are going to be putting on to our hoochies. Okay, now that we have talked about our hoochie setups and what's going on the end of our line, we're now going to talk about the different techniques that can be used to get our gear to the bottom. So the most common technique that's going to be used out here in the Puget Sound is the use of a spreader bar. As you can see here, I have one fully rigged up in terms of how it's going to look like. We have our hoochie with our two hooks coming off the long end of the spreader bar. And this here is a small size spreader bar. These come in an assortment of sizes, but really it serves one purpose in keeping your gear straight and aligned with the current and so it doesn't get mixed up. At the bottom of the spreader bar, I have something called a cod weight. These work very well keeping your gear on the bottom and you're using anywhere from one to two, even up to four pounds of weight in the Puget Sound. In the Puget Sound, we have some very stiff and hard currents that will be able to sweep up your gear. And I've personally seen a three pound cod weight. This is a two pound. So you can imagine how heavy a three pound is be swept up and washed up in the current. And I'm not able to even keep my gear on the bottom. So do keep track of your tides. And towards the end of this video, we'll go over what are you looking for in tides? What are you looking for in location? And as well as other techniques that can be used under different circumstances. Cod weights are not the only weights that are, you are able to use. As you can see here, I have a large cannonball weight. These work great as well. Uh, the round shape helps bounce off the bottom. A lot of people believe that it doesn't get nearly as easily snagged up. Now, if you're halibut fishing, you shouldn't be losing gear because if you are, you're in the wrong. Now, coming towards the end of this kind of tutorial, it really starts coming down to what is going on your hook. Some people don't like to use a lot of bait due to the dogfish coming into our Puget Sound. They can be a huge problem as they eat literally everything and anything you send down. With this early opener in early April, it provides an opportunity to fish the Puget Sound while the dogfish have not yet entered as they come closer to the spring and summertime. Um, all of these baits can be fished alone, but it is not recommended because it is not the most effective way. Why the two hooks on all of these rigs, or even the circle hook, is you are tending to put either a octopus tentacle, a squid, or a combination of all three, and the last one is heron. If you put those on there, those add a lot of broadcasting bait and scent into the water, and it also provides a basis of meat and scales that you can inject with scent to be able to spread your bait and scent through the water column. In terms of the two major ways that the halibut are targeted, there is anchoring and then there is drifting. Drifting is the process of which you set up a current drift and you just drift across in one of the plateaus and one of the reefs that's out here in the Puget Sound. All you're doing is you're using this exact same rig of the spreader bar and you're just bouncing along the bottom. This creates a lot of commotion in the water and it gets the halibut curious. And in that case, you're just hoping that you land up on top of one of the halibut and essentially get one. Anchoring is a little bit more complex. If you have not yet anchored, do not let the first day of halibut season be the first time you anchor. I recommend you go out and practice in shallow and calm water conditions for your own safety as anchoring in Puget Sound can be extremely dangerous if done incorrectly. It's a very easy way to capsize even a big boat. When you're anchoring up, the technique is basically chumming. What chumming includes is a lot of guys will send down a downrigger with a chum sack or a chum tube. It is basically packed in with your older crab bait fish carcasses, salmon carcasses, salmon heads, shrimp bait, anything that has enough oil and scent into the water. Now the key with halibut is you want fresh bait. You don't want rotten old bait down there. You want fresh bait broadcasting into your area. Having this scent trail down there, when you anchor up, you're expecting to receive bites anywhere from half an hour up to an hour and a half into your soak time. So don't be afraid to sit on a spot 
through a tide swing. And that's what we're gonna get into here next, right before we go over one of our last techniques in drifting is exactly what you are looking for in a tide. Along with all of these hoochies and all of these rigs and setups, as the year kind of gets going and we get into later May, the dogfish will start showing up and using these large hoochies with bait will become a lot more difficult, uh, as in the dogfish are gonna be in the Puget Sound. Another common theme that is used out here are these large size darts. This is a just a non-name brand lead dart with a big hook hanging off the back. Do keep in mind in the Puget Sound, all fishing is requiring barbless hooks. However, a lot of people don't know about this rule that if you are fishing for everything but salmon, you are allowed to use barbless treble hooks. So all of these rigs, this last trailing hook could technically be a treble hook. And you might see on finally on opening day, some of my rigs having a treble hook. Now, when using these darts, have the same application of putting a liberal amount of scent. And these are typically used while drifting, while do not exclude them while anchoring. Because while anchoring, if you're seeing that you're getting bites, don't be afraid to throw these behind your baits and bounce it back. As some of this halibut, they will sit in groups and they will be about 20 to 35 feet behind your bait unsure if they want to bite and maybe having that dart come back towards them can stimulate them to bite. Now, finally, after we kind of go over all the gear, and of course, I do want to say this is just scratching the surface. There's a thousand different ways to do this. There's a million different techniques and everybody's going to tell you the right and wrong way and the different colors, but really it comes down to what are you confident and comfortable fishing with. I know there's guys that go out there with just bare hooks and herring and they catch their halibut and then there's guys that go out there with their cheaters and their hoochie skirts and that's what they catch their halibut with. As a matter of fact, a similar rig to this was used to catch a very large, I believe it was around 300 pound halibut out of Washington State last year. Now, when talking about location and tide, what are you looking for? Generally, I like to tell people to look for a tide change. Um, you know, an ebb going to a flow, a flow going to an ebb. This stimulates a little bit of a calm period in terms of when those halibut are being slowed down. A lot of these halibut are hunkering down during these tar large current flows and they're waiting for the current to slow down and take their opportunity to feed. So when you're anchoring up, look for banks and you're trying to target the top of a plateau, the top of an area in which the halibut are easily able to sit on the edge and come up and feed on all extra bait that's coming over the edge. That's why having a chum and a scent bag spreading over the edge of the current flow, they're able to come up and feed and they're stimulated by that. Now, if you're confused on where to go, if your boat's appropriate to go, and it all comes down to how much you are willing to do and if you watch your weather right. I personally go out and fish the Puget Sound in a 16 foot boat with a 115 horsepower engine and I do just fine. However, I am heavily restricted against big tidal current flows and weather. Locations, let's list a few off. There is Hind Bank, Middle Bank, uh, Partridge, Eastern Bank, and even working your way up north there are several banks around Orcas Island, as well as going towards Admiralty Bay. All of these areas can be explored and you can really see large bankments underwater. Now, when you're looking at these banks, you wanna stay away from any type of mud and rock. Halibut generally like to be in sand and in shale. If you're losing gear, get out of there. That's too much rock. If you're pulling, if you're having your gear hit the bottom and get stuck, and they get sticky and you're pulling up and you're seeing mud on your weights, move the area. Halibut do not like to get themselves dirty by sitting in the mud. If you're noticing that your gear is hitting the bottom and it's a nice smooth surface, no snags, no nothing, you're generally in the right area. Now, I will say this as we're getting to the end of our video. When you go halibut fishing for the very first time, I will paint into perspective how much time it took for me to get my first fish. I put in about 10 trips before on the 11th trip, I finally was able to catch my first fish. Maybe I was just unlucky, but that just starts to paint a picture that 
halibut fishing is one of our difficult fisheries in the Puget Sound. So when going out, make sure you do your research, you ask your locals, and it's very effective that if you're going out, you have two or three boats around you because if you have another boat, let's say a couple miles away, and they get on the fish, they can let you know where the fish are at because there are certain bakes that will produce more fish every year than others. So that was a little bit of a tutorial of our halibut fishing that's going to be taking place here this following week in the Puget Sound. Um, here in the Washington State, we have Holiday Sports, a great center for lots of customers to come in and find out about great fishing opportunities. And as all of these products shown, we in-house tie all of these rigs there, as well as we are more than happy to help customers figure out specifically how they wanna catch fish and what they need to do. So thank you guys for watching this video. And I just wanna tell you guys, stay tuned for the upcoming halibut video. I'm gonna keep my fingers crossed that this year will be a good one.